too. I can hear it right now. For those who come on in tonight, they're probably trying to do their pool. Where's Amos at? Amos, Amos, Amos. He's back there somewhere. Amos chapter 3. We're going to read verse number 3. You're going to have to do all that searching for one scripture. And you're going to say, oh, what worth it? Yes, it is. One word. All it takes is one word from the master. Can somebody say amen? amen. amen. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. If you can, stand one more time for the reading of God's word. He said, each church stand one I've ever seen. Amen. You get loose quick when you stand up. You get still when you sit down. <laughs> Listen to the question that the Lord is asking the children of Israel. You may say the Old Testament is irrelevant to our salvation, but I beg to disagree. It's our mirror that shows Amen. us how dirty we are. Amen. The new covenant gives us the power to clean ourselves up. Without a mirror, it's pretty much impossible to see how many wrinkles you have on your face. How many gray hairs you have in your head. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. Can two walk together except they be agreed? That's what I'm going to preach upon this morning. Lord, lay it in my heart. So if you will, pray with me this morning. Father, I thank you for your word. It's not a whole lot of reading this morning, God. But I pray that you would anoint it, Father. We invite your presence in this house this morning, God. That, that, that it be a tangible presence. Lord, I know we don't have to feel you to walk by faith. But it sure does make it a whole lot funner when we can feel you, Lord. And, you know, we can go in there and get a bath. And, you know, and may not feel good, but sometimes it does feel good when we get to singing in the shower and just having a good old time refreshes us. And that's what the Bible talks about, the washing of the Word, washing of regeneration, the renewing of the Holy Ghost, renewing us a right spirit this, this morning. God, be with all those who are not watching, Lord, and all the ones online. I hear it all the time, people commenting. But Lord, those that are members and faithful attendant, Lord, convict them of sitting at home this morning, knowing that their church body is having church but for all the visitors to tune in, God, feed them. Lord, those that are sick and not able to come, feed them through the ministry of Facebook and YouTube. God, God bless these people who do it. I pray for the abundance of my heart. My mouth will speak. My heart may be filled with love. And we'll give you all praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's give the Lord some big clap and hand clap and praise for the Lord. It sticks out in my mind and it kind of challenges me in my mind how that the world, the lost people, when I say the world, can get along better than the church does. Wow. I'm reminded in the book of Genesis, I think it is, where they was building a tower. We call it the Tower of Babel. And these people were not saved, but they wanted to reach where God was. They began to build a tower. And the Bible said that the Trinity began to talk among themselves and said, if we don't go down and stop them, they put their mind to doing something and they're going to accomplish what they put their mind to. Can I tell you today, church, that unity is precious in the body of Christ. If we was to put our mind to doing something that God wants us to do, we can accomplish the, the goals that God has placed in our lives. But we fight so much opposition when it comes to doing things together. And you know, as I began to read the definition in the Webster's Dictionary of, of unity and, and, and agreement, the word agreement means harmony. And I'm not, a, I'm not a genius when it comes to music, but I know a little bit about music. And, and I thought about harmony because the first thing church people think, just because we don't always see eye to eye, we need to split up. And I need to go find somebody that I do see eye to eye with. But I have noticed that people over the years, if somebody hurts you at this church, you'll find somebody else that hurts you at that church because we're just all human beings. Amen. Amen. And I'm not going to say there's a wrong time to leave a church because, number one, if the gospel's not being preached behind the pulpit, it's time to either kick the pastor out or fold your Bible up go find you another church because when I go to church, I want my soul to be fed. Amen. If you've got all the smoke rising from the stage and the hard rock music entertaining your body and you're able to dance and shout and do somersaults but don't have no bread of the Word of God, your soul will starve to death. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yeah. you got to have the Word. I'm tired of going to these rock concerts where we tickle people's ears and bang our heads back and forth and it's like you've been at Led Zeppelin concert or something and they sing for an hour and a half and preach a 
sermonette for 10 minutes and you wonder why the church is weak and has no power to lay hands upon the sick. It's because we're worshiping and we're singing, but we're not hearing the word. Can I tell you the word of God is important? And God asks us a question. How can we walk together if we're not agreed? Amen. How? You see, the children of Israel have gotten to a place where America's at nowadays. They begin to live ungodly. They begin to live unholy, but they still wanted to come to church. Amen. They walk right on up into the sanctuary. They begin to worship God, but it began to put a fire of holiness within God, and he began to put it within his prophet Amos, and he said, go ask them a question. How can they worship me with sin in their life? Can I tell you today, there's no fellowship if there's no friendship. Friendship has got to come before fellowship. The Bible said, what communion hath the, hath the body of Christ with Belial? What, what, what concord? What do we have? We can't drink the cup of the Lord and drink the cup of the devil at the same time. We're living in a generation where hoodlums want to live like the devil Monday through Saturday. Pop go the weasel. The weasel go pop Sunday morning. And the Holy Ghost fall all upon you. But I come to tell you, that's a false doctrine. And I don't care if you never come back to church here again. I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to preach the word of God. preach the truth that will make you I study different pastors and how quick they are to grow churches. And I think to myself, I've been preaching my heart out for nine years, and you know, we got a pretty good, decent sized congregation. We had a good sized congregation before COVID came about. But I, I, I watch Johnny come lately preachers as they go to new churches and they can build two to three hundred church people churches within just a few months. And I begin to think, how do they do it, man? What a great anointing. But when I get around them, I don't feel nothing. There's no zeal. I don't feel the witness, a spirit of God bearing witness with me. Then I get around them and I hear them counseling people about marriage and says, it doesn't matter how many times you've been married and divorced and you can just keep getting remarried and keep getting remarried. And then I hear them when it comes time to uh, preaching people into heaven or hell. It doesn't matter how they died. It doesn't matter how they live. We know they automatically go to heaven. And I think to myself, if that's what it takes to build a church, if I've got to come out and pass you out uh, candy and throw you candy and be a, a, a sugar plum a sugar plum preacher, I'd rather have a small church and be right in the eyes of God than have a big church and be right to you the whole time. If I come to keep your ears, the Bible said they would have doctrines of devils. They would speak lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron to believe a lie and to be damned. I want to let you know today, you cannot walk with God if you're not walking in truth. Come on, somebody. God is a spirit that can worship God. You must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yes, Amen. And so many folk come by and they want to know, Brother Brandon, why am I not feeling things? Why is my walk stagnant? Why am I not getting close with God? Friend, that's a question you need to ask yourself besides me. I don't go home with you. I, I, I don't live with you. But there is someone who has lived with you. If you've invited the Spirit of God to live in your heart, He said He would never leave you. Now you can leave Him, but He'll never leave you. He'll go with you. Come on, He's the God of the valleys and He's the God of the hills. No matter where you go, He's always present. I'm so thankful that I serve a God that I don't have to wait to get to the church house to worship Him. If I get to feel Him going down the road, He's worthy to lift my hands up in a red light. If I act crazy for the devil, I don't even act more crazy. I wish I had some folks that used to be crazy on and give them a wave off my hand. Amen. 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 I get sick and tired of hearing uh, just Johnny come lately preachers that wants to tickle your ears and, and heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. And they tell you what you want to hear. You can walk in and oh my God, you're living, brother. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Just come on in and just make your sin welcome at home. But no, 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 that's not the message of the cross. The message of the cross is come as you are, but you're not going to leave like you come. He that is in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I can hear John the Baptist say, Behold, the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sin of the world. Brother, he didn't come to save you in your sin. Sister, he didn't come to save you in your sin. If you still want your sin, then obviously you don't want God. Amen. Amen. No matter if we get the claps or the applause, woe be unto that man when all shall speak well of him. We have preachers that are coveting cars and houses and 
watches and rings and money and preaching the gospel for filthy lucre and want to tell you what you want to hear that you might get a little bit more money in the offering plate. I had a job before I came a preacher. I got a job while I am a preacher and if he sees fit that I don't preach tomorrow, I'll have a job when preaching's over me. Come on somebody. I know the neighbor's work in the tower and I know that you should not the ox and tread it out the corn but God forbid that I put my pants on in the morning time. Word of And now confusion's in our mind. I said, well, we 
know, just brother just saying always God's will to heal. And then we start hooking up with people like that. We start walking with people like that. And the next thing you know, they mess us up on the inside and they cause us well, we don't really know if God wants to heal people or not. And so the whole church has been distorted. But I've been preaching divine healing. He's lit a fire within my candle from the time of 22 years old when the doctors pretty much told me I wasn't going to make it. But Jesus walked in that doctor's room and gave me enough of faith. It don't take much faith. Come on, somebody. All it takes is a faith to the grain of a mustard seed. And you shout the name of say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. And it should obey. So he healed my body. I've been preaching divine healing for so many years now. And I get critics that say, well, you just don't believe in doctors. There's nothing wrong with doctors. In Luke chapter 8, a physician is writing about this account. Yeah. Uh, God showed me that this morning. I really ain't bright enough to come up with stuff like that. But he said, look who wrote the book. Yeah. And his name's at the top, even though we know he wrote it under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But Luke, the physician, writes about this book. Some folks say that it's, you know, something wrong with doctors. Jesus had one for disciples, and I will agree with you that some of our doctors and our nurses have been our heroes in 2020, putting their life on the line to try to do what they can with this virus. But listen, we need to preach to doctors today that when you don't have an answer, you need to leave the synagogue, go looking for Jesus to come into your Amen. Even preachers. We need to quit preaching so much and pray more that God will come into our ministry. Because if I preach and God doesn't annoy it, then it's not going to break the yoke that has people well. I don't desire to preach for an hour and a half. I desire to preach 30 minutes. I got too fat to preach for an hour and a half. I like to preach for 30 minutes and let the Holy Ghost take over and heal bodies and raise the dead. So, saying all that, nowhere in Luke's account do I see him with his scaffold in his hand. Right. Saying, come on in my office, let me show you how to heal. Luke doesn't put the emphasis upon Luke. He puts the emphasis upon Jesus who he's following. Amen. And so, Jairus has got Jesus' attention, y'all. He's bringing him back to the house where his daughter's sick at. But as he's going, hallelujah, there's a lady who's been sick with a blood issue. Yes. Was it for 12 years, I think? I forgot how long it was. But it had been sick for a long time of bleeding. Right. Can't stop the bleeding. Can I tell you that when you get sick and tired of something you can't stop, you'll leave your place go looking for Jesus. Amen. And the Bible said that, G, that, the, that the lady pressed her way through the crowd. Now this account is in different Gospels. But I don't remember seeing Jairus. It may have been. But nevertheless, as, the, as Jesus is heading to Jairus' house, the lady who's following Jesus presses through and touches the hem of his garment. Now, Jesus ain't got to stop. Just like I ain't got to preach about this right now because it's not really in my message. Wow. This is rabbit trails. I get such a blessing off of rabbit trails because I found out I ain't nothing but a hound dog. Come on, somebody. And I found the Holy Ghost on those rabbit trails. And a lot of people say, I'll never know what you preach about because you start about this and end up about that. But let me tell you something. We all are different up inside this building and everybody needs something different from the Lord. Sometimes we need to go around the rabbit trail. And talk about what God's talking about. But Jesus don't have to stop, y'all. He don't have to stop, but he does. He stops, and I can just see Jairus. You know, he don't want to insult Jesus because he's the Messiah, even though Jairus is the ruler of the synagogue. He's like, come on, man, my daughter's sick. Jesus, hold up, hold up, just a second, hold up, just a second. And he goes to preaching a sermon on this lady who's touched his garment. Amen. She already had the healing. She didn't need a sermon. That's what's wrong with a lot of people. They don't think they need sermons. Amen. They just need this, and they just need that, and they just need it. But listen, all this and that will wear away, but the word of God will never fade away. You can live by the word of God. Amen. 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 And there was something other else that, that Jesus, I feel like, that, that 
pause. How many has ever had Jesus to delay something you need it now? Kind of like this new church being built. And you're like, come on, God, now. We need it now. We need it now. And he delays it. Man, you needed a job, but he delayed it. You needed this. And you need that appointment, but he just delays it. Keeps delaying. You're like, God, please hurry up and come. But I read in Isaiah where it said, blessed are those that wait upon the Lord, for they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not fall. How many people can wait on the Lord here lately? And it seems like he's four days late. I come to let you know when Jesus steps on the scene, he can call those things which be not as though they were. He's able to receive them abundantly above all that he asks for things according to the power that works in them. So he's delayed. All Jairus probably can think about is his daughter lying there six. And come on, Messiah, I need you to come and touch my daughter. But Jesus chooses to preach a little while. Right. Because after all, he is a preacher of righteousness. But the Bible said once he gets through preaching that he comes to the house where the daughter is laying. And I want you to pay close attention. Don't drift off out there la la land. I know I'm not the best preacher of entertaining somebody. But you must pay attention if you're going to get the meat out of the message today. When he comes to the house, the Bible said all these doubters. It doesn't list them as doubters. But we can definitely define them as doubters. But they came and they began to ridicule. They said, oh no, there's no need going on. No, no need in trouble no more. The, 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 the girl is dead. The child is dead. Jesus says she's not dead. She's just asleep. Right. And they laughed him to scorn. They made fun of him. Yeah. When's the last time you tried to believe God for something supernatural? You had some doubters in your life. Come on. They wasn't at the bar room. They was in your church house. Yeah. I said they was in your church house. Yeah. Oh, no child. Your name will never get no better. Your name will always stay messed up. I got a name. It's not me that that hell is alive. Just because your lady brought it off. Don't mean my lady. Your lady brought it off. It's what you believe. And I am about to believe what you have to believe. I believe that by his strength, we are killed. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. 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 Don't get on that right talk, y'all. Because sometimes we got to get unbelief yeah, that's right. out of the house. Amen. I'm tired of seeing Christians with no backbone. The Bible said that they believed the apostles were apostles because they spoke the word of God boldly. I don't care how many degrees you got. Show me some boldness. Show me some boldness. We're not scared of the devil. Man, the church walks around in fear most of the day. Amen. So, if Jesus, the one who raises the dead, y'all, the one whose spirit is in Ezekiel, when he pulls him out to a valley of dry bones and asks, can these bones live? And the spirit of Jesus, which is the spirit of prophecy, prophesies through Ezekiel and speaks to the bones, and the bones become sinew and flesh, and the flesh began to breathe breath back into the life of the body, and it becomes a living soul. Once again, I'm talking about Jesus. They took a jar of water that said, make sure you fill it to the brim, that nowhere else can nobody else get glory. There's no more, there's no more room for nobody else to get the glory. Make sure you fill the water pot slap to the brim. That after I touch it, there's no way that water could have turned into wine and Accepted in Jesus. The same Jesus that was able to take a blind man whose blood vessels were dead. There was no light to the blind man's eyes. That he washed it. Come on, somebody. He spit upon a piece of clay and put the clay upon his eyes and he came up seeing again. The same Jesus that took the ones that were filled with the devils and cast the devils out of Mary and Mary caused to be blessed to be Jesus. Come on, the same Jesus that took an old crack at it. Oh, 
what he does have. Amen. Bless those loaves of bread and those few fish and it fed 5,000. Just scratch your head on that one, one time. 5,000. I don't care how many times you break a couple loaves of bread and a few fish, you're not going to get 5,000 meals out of that. But bless the bread fed 5,000. Don't get your calculator out so soon because that was just men. And that was just men. That wasn't counting women and children. Oh my God. Then turned around and I can hear the Spirit of the Lord said I gave it back to him because if you deal it shall be given back to you. Press down, shake it up. Look up, come on, let me know. Let me know that you can put it back. And the truth is, he gave him back more than he had. So I wish I had somebody to call out to this point. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. And it is to the same old God that we preach this like I feel it in my bones today. The same Jesus that took Peter's mother-in-law when the doctor said we don't know nothing else to do with this fever. And Jesus walks in and touches him. Then the same Jesus that came to Peter, who was a cussing sailor that didn't know how to make a living, that was broke, busted, and disgusted, and had his nets torn to the bank. There's been so many people who's came to church and gave up on the Lord. But I want to let you know good news today. Just because you gave up on the Lord don't mean the Lord gave up on you. He began to look for Peter. Aren't you glad today the Lord came looking for you? He came looking for Peter. He said, what are you doing, Peter? He said, oh, I'm giving up my nets. I'm giving it up for the year. He said, don't give up so soon. Put your boat back in the water. Throw your net out on the other side. And the same Jesus that caused Peter to come up with more fish than he ever caught before. And his neighbors had to help him drown. I'm talking about the awesome, omnipotent Jesus. Amen. And in all of his power and his splendor and his array gives us an example of what to do with people who don't walk like we do. Come on. He comes to the house, Brother Joe and the disciples are all excited because Jesus has said he's going to take the little girl and heal the little girl's just sleeping anyhow. She ain't really sick. But Jesus wasn't talking about sleep and physical sleep. She had sleep the sleep of death. All right. And he told the people to them all get out. You say, that's, just, that's unkind, Brother Brandon. We can't be unkind like that. It just depends on who you've been unkind to. Amen. Some of us have been kind to the devil. Amen. And let you ride on our shoulder. Amen. Way too long. Amen. Let me show you where Satan belongs, Ed. He belongs under your feet. Yes. Yes. If you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. The Bible says, give no place. Help me preach that. Give no place to the devil. Want to know why he's ruining your life? You gave him sub, you gave him permission. Don't blame the other devil with his hurt. My life, you made that the devil ain't done nothing. You let the devil ruin your life. Jesus was not always kind. Amen. 
Amen. I'm sick and tired of these preachers going around talking about stuff they don't know what they're talking about. They talk a little bit about something, but not the whole book. Well, Brother Randy, we don't want to run nobody off the church. We want everybody to come. No, you don't. Amen. My no. strange thing. Right. And I don't think that where when Jesus keeps them out of church, you ain't read your Bible. Yeah, he keeps a bunch of folk out of church. Yeah. You read what you want to read. You, some people don't read their Bibles. They listen to preachers preaching. That's their daily Bible reading. But I'm telling you that Jesus said in the last days, many false prophets will arise. You don't need to be encouraged if you're living like the enemy. Amen. You need to 
He says to the people in the church, I want all y'all to come around here. And in Matthew chapter 18, if I'm not mistaken, Jesus gives us a recipe for miracles. Yeah. He says for two or three, agree. Somebody say agree. agree. Ain't that what we preach about? And two walk together except they be I ain't forgot about the music. I just missed it. I'll be back to it after a while. Or two or three agree on touching any one thing in his name, it shall be done. So I got to study about that the other night. I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, show me what you're talking about. Because sometimes we agree and it don't happen. Or sometimes we think we agree and it don't happen. And then I'm stuck as a preacher, man, to answer all these questions. Why can't it happen? Why can't it happen? Why can't it happen? And so I begin to read. And you know, as preachers, you're supposed to take things in context. You're not supposed to take things out of context or right divide the word of truth. And as I'm sitting there reading, he's talking about forgiveness in Matthew chapter 18. He said, if anybody has Paul and go and ask him to forgive and take two or three if he disagrees and, you know, and on this and that. And then he goes, but two or three agree on touching anyone. But there's one thing, you know, because I'm like, well, Brother, Brother Cooper and must have took it out of context because they weren't talking about forgiveness. They were talking about healing. And they believed if they agreed on healing, that they would be healed. And it's like the Lord said, go back and read it. Because as I begin to read it clearer and closer, it said, for two or three agree on touching anything. And the Lord said that means anything. You want to know why Satan fights the church so hard? You want to know why Satan fights the marriage so hard? Because if he can get the marriage and he has the church, and if he can get the church, he's got the world. But I come to tell him he's got a higher power to fight against. He might even take me under the grave. Is he that is in me? And he that is in this world, somebody give God a shout of praise. We pray for two or three agree. We pray for Brother Bill. Weeks went by, months went by. I heard nothing from Brother Bill. I never felt like I had enough faith to heal anybody, to be honest with you. I felt like it always had to be Sister Mary. Oh, my Brother Cooper, Brother Cobb, some of these great names that we mentioned. But little did I know that the same Christ that anoints them to heal the sick. Is the same Christ that I asked to come in my heart the full gospel for Allison at 22 years old. How many ever asked Christ to come in your heart? You got the same Christ. You got the same Christ. Months passed by, and you know, God began to show me that I did have faith. I didn't feel like I had much, and I was down on myself, and never thought I was good enough, but I had faith, and I'll show you the reason why. And He showed me that I had faith. It's because I went back and asked Him, Have y'all heard from Brother Bill? Lee? Because people who really don't have faith, they're not going to ask about it because they don't believe nothing's changed. Yeah, but I was wondering if my prayer somehow or another got past all my unbelief and all my doubts and all my Amen. insecurities and you know, and, and somehow, somehow reached the throne of God. Yeah. And nobody knew nothing. Nobody, I'm thinking, this is Franklin, Alabama, and nobody knows nothing. My brother Bill, he lives here. He, you know, that shocked me. Months pass by, months pass by, and I know you've heard nothing about Brother Bill. And I'm curious because I'm lifting Brother Bill up. I want to see the old church back. I want to see the old times back there. Yeah. When we go spread like rain and they run the key yeah. and shout at the picture. I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of this dead church we have nowadays. When we come to press, we leave the press. We come stress, we leave stress. I don't want to leave out of here knowing that I have been in the press. Be 
field out the door. He got two miracles. Come on. He got two miracles. The Lord put his heart back in his chest, but when he did, he gave him another heart. He took the stone and heart out. Anyhow, 
And I'm thinking, Brandon, you're such an oddball. <laughs> that's who I am. Amen. That is who I am. Amen. I want to wear pink. Amen. I want to wear pink. Amen. Real men wear pink. Amen. If I want to wear brown in spring, yeah. I will wear autumn brown in spring. Amen. Amen. Now, I ain't got bold enough to wear blue at a funeral yet, but I'm an oddball. That doesn't make me not your brother in Christ. Because I've been washed in the same blood that you have. Amen. And though the body of Christ is so different, it's so unique because we've been called to be in unity. Yeah. You want to see the Holy Ghost fall? Go back to the prophecy in the book of Psalms where he said, How pleasant is it for brethren to dwell together in unity? It's like the oil that flew down the beard of Aaron, even to the skirts of his garment, where life was commanded upon that mountain, and the blessing forevermore. Anytime you read about oil, he's talking about the Spirit of God. When the body of Christ gets in one mind, even though some may be low, some may Somebody might be right there in the middle. But I'll tell you one thing, we gotta all be in one accord. Amen. Amen. I know I'm getting long winded, I, I don't apologize, but anyhow. <laughs> I am funny when it comes to music. Very, very funny. Because I have heard people say, well, yeah, we just let it just do that, do that, we just let it go. No, we don't. Not for Jesus. If you want to just let it fly, go to the bar rooms and let it fly. Because they don't care what you're saying anyhow. I'm not giving you permission to go to the bar room. We don't want to leave you on the video. I'm just saying. That's where that mentality goes to is in the bar room. Amen. Not in the church house. I have been to scenes that they call local talent scenes all over this country. And I don't go no more. Because there's very few very little talent. No, it's all wow. But when brother is in G chord over here, yep. and sisters in C chord over there, would you call that giving God glory, making a joyful noise unto the Lord? Wow. Go home and practice, man. Yeah. Now you can be in a low octave and be in a high octave, but we've got to be in the same chord. Sister Mary that wasn't even a singer 
have an old scratchy voice on. But she tried her best and she get up there saying, My God is real. The Holy Ghost began to fall. Even though she wasn't a singer, Amen. she tried her best. She done her best. When people try their best, God will give them a blessing Amen. for doing their best. Amen. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. I can't close without leaving you with this last little bit. What Jesus done needs to be reacted in our lives. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9. Did I tell y'all Luke 8? Yeah. I didn't. That's where I meant. Luke 8. And then Acts chapter 9 in my closing today. The disciples learned from Jesus. And what's so different about it because I'm not smart enough to come up with stuff like this that the same author Luke that wrote Luke scholars also says he wrote Acts he's still writing about getting stuff out of our lives that don't agree there was a lady named Tabitha interpretation Dorcas and she was an alms giver she made clothing she died. They sent for Peter. They had her in the upper room. They was bathing her down, anointing her body for the burial, getting ready to bury. Do you know how many times the devil tried to come out and bury us? Oh, He's going to put us out. Man. He's trying to bury this service right now. I can feel everybody's hands are ready to go home. I don't care. We're going to have church. We come to have church. Amen. 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 I'm not going to finish the God's finish with me. I don't care if it's 12 o'clock, 12, 15. Put your crock pot on. You know about that. We don't let out here at a certain time. We start on a certain time. We don't know how to quit. Somebody say glory. glory. They got it ready to die. Some of y'all here lately, the devil has been packing you up, getting you uh, frankincense and myrrh and getting you all kind of aloes and spices upon you, trying to make you smell good when you're dead. There ain't nothing good that smells good when you're dead. I want to be absent from the body be present for the Lord. I'm dead. I don't want to be dressed up in flowers. Keep all your flowers. I just want to see Jesus when I die. Oh, and these disciples have read the book, they have read the book, they have tried, they have failed, they have tried, they have failed, they have tried, they have failed. Oh, the Lord had came by many times and told them, this kind of told them, no afford by nothing but by prayer and by fasting. They would try, they would fall, they would try, they would fail, they would try, they would fail. And gathered in the upper room in Acts chapter 2, the Bible said, suddenly there came from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled 120 believers in that upper room and cloven tongues like as a fire fell upon each of them and they spake with tongues as the Spirit gave them others. And they came out of that upper room filled with the Holy Ghost and fire. Hey. Somebody say, I'm loaded and dangerous. They tap the die, they pat her down, they get her smelling good, they get her smelling good, they get ready for the funeral, they get ready to say a few words on behalf of Tap. You know, she was such an alms giver and such an alms. She was so nice. And all of a sudden, people said, ah, I'm sorry to discourage your wake. And I know you get ready for the funeral, but I read in my Bible where Jesus came by and touched a dead girl. Matter of fact, Jews and Greeks even said that the spirit didn't leave the body till after three days. And there was one occasion where Jesus left Lazarus dead for four days. Just to prove to the Greek Jews and Greeks with God, nothing's impossible. I am the resurrection and the life. Any man comes to me, he must come to the Nobody comes to the Father except through him. And all of a sudden, Peter comes up to the upper room and he says, he says, uh, he said, what, what, what did he say? What did he say? This is what he said. He said, uh, uh, get out. Amen. Yeah. Same stuff Jesus says. He's reacting what Jesus says. Why? Because he knows that the people in the room obviously don't have enough faith. You say, Brother Brennan, why are you so mean about this faith thing? Because it's serious, man. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. You got
Bueno, go. He speaks to tap. Tap. Arise. Go. Girl sits up. <laughs> Somebody said, it's just that easy. Just that easy. The hard part was standing up to his enemies that made him at the door. Amen. She lived a good old life. At least she didn't suffer. All those flattering words that your church family tell you when you need a miracle. She lived a good old life. She was nice. Did you bow your heads and hear this morning? If somebody's in a 